Hi. How's it going? We're back. <laughs> it's been a while. Long while. You're on this side. You're on this this way for me. Wait. That way. This way? Wait. There. That. I can't do it. You're you're not this way. You're the opposite way of me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're here to talk best survivor players to never win. And you'll see some people on here that you expect to see on here. But you'll also see some people that maybe you wouldn't expect to be in a top 10. We each made our own individual lists. Mm-hmm. And then we combined them. to, And if they had the same people on them, then they made the list. But some we had different people. So mm-hmm. some of them got knocked out. Um, and Tasha and Spencer were on my list. Um, and they didn't make the final cut, which I understand. It's but. okay. Yeah, it's okay. Malcolm didn't make the list either, and I had him on my original list. So, But there are people – what's funny is, like, with Tasha, Spencer, and Malcolm, there are similar players that play their style that are in the top ten. At number ten, there's actually a tie, and the tie is between basically the opposite players. Got <laughs> For real. Russell and Ozzy. Ozzy is a huge social and challenge threat, and Russell is just everything but social threat. Is one of the most unlikable just human beings, I think, but deserves props because he he got himself to the final. He knows how to be a manipulator. Yeah. And he knows how to um, – he tried to be a little bit like, like a Boston Rob and, like, be a mob boss, but, like, a really mean – yeah. Manipulative mob boss. Um, but it worked for him. Yeah, well, it worked to get to the end. It didn't work to buy right. him jury But votes. then he didn't get any votes Yeah, because he was a jerk. Bad at jury management. But also, he cha- he also changed the way Survivor is played. And everyone after him is playing a Russell-type game, only they're good at social. <laughs> they can be nice to people. Yeah, exactly. And then Ozzy is just... He's like a survivor archetype. He's the person that can go out and get fish. He can swim really good. He can do challenges really good. He can lose, intentionally lose, go to Redemption Island, and then come back and almost win the game. Number nine, we have Jonathan Penner. Really good at the game, but his one fault is that he always screws up one time and it ends up getting him voted out. I think he wins bad luck award. He, yes. He has... <laughs> He, he is so smart and he can see so far ahead of him in the game. And like, he could like tell you what every day of the 36 days is going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then he like gets hurt in a challenge and then his leg almost blows up and falls off. Or in Philippines where he flat out tells Denise, he doesn't want to be in alliance with her when he knows Denise is going to get to the end. If him and him and her just team up. But he doesn't, and he gets voted out. And it's just like, Penner, you're always doing something. One time your body failed you. One time yeah. your mind failed you. And the, the first time, his social game failed him because, you know, he flipped so many times in his first season. It was kind of bizarre. <laughs> All right, number five. Uh, no, wait, number five. Number eight. <laughs> Skipping ahead. Number eight, we have Amanda Kimmel. You know, if poverty didn't exist... If Todd Herzog didn't exist, yeah, <laughs> she'd be a champion. But unfortunately, she is. She gets put in the like poverty like boat where they're like, yeah, she's just pretty and she's just gonna flirt or just be hot, and that's how she's gonna <laughs> try to get through this game. But she's smart, yeah, um, and proven that because she gets all the way to the end multiple times. She just can't get the crown. Uh, that's how. Hey, that's why she's on this list. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> She's a good player. Yeah, for sure. I'd like to see her again one more time. All right, number seven, we have Yao Man. And this oh, dude, sweet Yao Man. Oh, man. I loved him so much. His his original season were Oral One. I would compare him to Malcolm and Johnny Fairplay in terms of, like, they became so big of a threat that it was impossible for them to ever make it to the end. Yeah. Because they're He's not also- – they're not challenge. They're not good at challenges. Like Malcolm, who we've seen multiple times fail at the individual challenges because he got so nervous. Yellman just wasn't didn't have the physical strength. To He's do- tiny. Speaking yeah. of tiny and and 
not looking like much on the, on the face value of something. He's this tiny, like older Asian man. He's so small. Um, and he's just so like kind of excited to be there almost kind of just like, this is cool. But then he can get so far. Yeah. He's got, he's got a great mind. I, I remember his, the, his first season where they were trying to open up the, the box and none of these big burly dudes come. And then Yao man just like, he angles it and then smashes it on a rock and it opens. Oh yeah! <laughs> and I was just like, "Yeah, man's gonna win." That, that's what I. That's what I thought when I was watching. And then he he didn't win, obviously. But one of my when I think of Yao Man, I think of he found um, an idol one time that was shaped like a turtle, and it was on like a necklace. And like every time I think of Yao Man, this is the like visual I have. He like has he's like so excited he found this idol and he like kisses the little turtle. <laughs> he's just so sweet. He's like, yes, yes. <laughs> We're getting into our new school players. Number six, we have Kelly Wentworth, who basically was a threat every time she played. Her first time, she didn't get far. Second chances, she almost, she would have won that season if Jeremy and Tasha and Spencer didn't have such a strong alliance. And then obviously, the, her last season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, well, the first season, she it was the um, Blood and Water, right? Yeah, Blood and Water. She was there yeah. with her dad, and it just, that didn't really help a lot for any, but like it just kind of her dad sort of sunk, good sunk her game. Yeah. <laughs> and so they brought her back and she got really far. And that second time she played proved to everyone that she was a threat. So by the third time she came around, they're like, We gotta get Wentworth's just gotta go. Stands out as a as a threat. And yeah. that's just if by more and more times you come back, if the players that are there are smart enough, they know that you have to get out. So they did that. Yep. That's what they did to her. And speaking of threats, we have number five. We have Aubrey, who's played with Kelly Wentworth. She suffers the same problem as Wentworth in Edge of Extinction, where four returnees returned, and their threats were they were just so huge that they couldn't overcome it. But Aubrey in Game Changers and Co Wrong is absolutely like one of the top tier players for me. It was such a close battle between her and Michelle, and I'm never gonna disrespect Michelle's win. But I thought Especially Aubrey, not after uh, winners at war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Michelle proved that she deserved to win, but yeah. Aubrey, I don't know. There's a case to be made that she would have won if the jury wasn't so bitter and resentful. But survivors are one you play one time and you hopefully you win, you don't. You try again. We're in the top four. I just gotta say these four are like leagues above everybody else. Like Yeah. There's a there's a, a a little space in there. Yeah, so we'll go. Number four is the true hero of Survivor is Colby, and <sighs> man, well, let's be honest. His last season, he was a shell of his former self. Heroes versus villains. He kind of didn't play like uh, he didn't have a physical strength anymore, but he made it almost to the end. And if he had his physical strength in Hero versus Villains. He could have won his way to the end and potentially won that season. So it's like, it's not out of the realm of he's, possibility. Yeah, he's just, he's one of those, like, original, one of the, like, from, from the very beginning of the show, just, like, original, like, kind of hero, macho, but, like, good guy. Like, yeah. he's not, like, a jerk about it, but he is, like, the big, strong man on the beach. Yeah. Um, and everyone, but also, like, that everyone likes because he's just, like, a good person if he wasn't a good dude and he didn't take tina he would have won but he was a good dude yeah. and he took tina and tina won so i mean number three we have steven fishback who is one of the most intelligent players to play out there oh yeah but he's so intelligent that he screws up his own game <laughs> yeah he i mean he he gets he got himself to the end but it was jt right that he yeah. was like best friends with yeah. which he understood was a good strategy to get to the end, to, like, be this, like, power duo almost that, like, stays mm -hmm. together the whole time, and they're, like, best buds. But, like, he he let – he did all the dirty work almost. He had the same strategy with Jeremy. Unfortunately, he didn't realize Jeremy was using him as a shield. So – Yeah. And he got him out when he – the right time. But Fisherback is, like, what I would imagine – hopefully I would play like where I would find a person, stick with them, go to the end, 
and but I wouldn't I wouldn't be like try to be nice at Final Tribal. I would own up to my my dirty work. I would own up to the good fit plays. I wouldn't be like, oh, JT is a great person. I like him very much. I'd be like, look, we made it to the end together, but I did all the work. But you know, <laughs> I still love Fishback, and I, I never change. <laughs> yeah. Number two, it's the other know-it-all. We have Rob Sesternino. If I had a bell, I would ding it because that's what he does on his podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Incredibly smart and understanding how the game works from the beginning. Like coming in being like, I know how to win this game, but then tripping themselves up along the way. Yeah. It seems like they get, well, with Rob, he got in Amazon, he got too egotistical. And he yeah. thought he was. He thought that uh, Jenna or Matt were going to take him regardless of what happened in the final challenge. But what he didn't realize is that Jenna and Matt were a little smarter than he he thought they were. So, but then he came back in All Stars, and he was just. It's like the Aubrey effect. He's too big of a threat. You can't let him get anywhere. Blaster Rob knew that. He realized that and bounced him as soon as he could. Rob has done so much for the Survivor community that cannot thank him enough and i would love to see him on the the show again because it would just be hilarious to see him out there now <laughs> as an old dad man <laughs> i don't think he but could hey. play the same way i don't think he could if there was a coin and there was a bad luck coin penner would be on one side Ooh. and on the other side would be Suri. <laughs> yes oh god yes oh, everything man. everything has happened to her Literally everything. She, I think, is still the only, she's the only survivor to ever be voted out with no votes. And then also have a twist on her. Right. Where all of a sudden it's like, oh, final two again. JK, final two. But then right. also in Heroes versus Villains, she had a split vote come up against her. There's yeah. never been a good, there's never been a good time for her. <laughs> she's so smart and she, she knows what she's doing. And then those things are the things that get her out or that trip her up where she could not have, she could not have anticipated the, those things at all. Yeah. That, that tribal where everyone plays their idols or their advantages and, and she's just literally the only person that doesn't have an advantage. Like she couldn't have known that things That's that she, out of her control are the things that have prevented her from winning in my opinion. Yeah. So it, certainly have. she's on the bad luck coin. Yeah, for sure. And Sari is even from like, if you go from her first, to all the way to her last game, there's just so many iconic moments. Even moments where she doesn't isn't like the best. Like whenever she's tried to steal uh, Sarah's steal a vote advantage, she actually oh, yeah. survived that vote because of her social game. Like if anybody else would have done that and tried to steal it without reading the fine print, they'd been voted out that night. The Black Widows, like we have to bring that up. Like she was in that where they 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 convinced Eric to give up an immunity necklace at tribal and then voted him out. Like, yeah, that's one of the, I, it's up there the best survivor moments of all time. I mean, all of, it took all of those girls to make it happen, but yeah. Suri was the like, what if we did this? Yeah. And they're all like, that can't happen. She's like, well, let's try. And because, they all just, they all just gaslit Eric. And he was just yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> Poor but Eric. She was, but. she was the driving force. Mm -hmm. behind a lot of those big things and kept her likability at the same time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, because people aren't like, you know, some people like hate people like poverty or people who they say are like manipulative. Ceri's kind of manipulative, but she's also so likable mm -hmm. and has such a great social game that people don't hate her. If exactly. she ever got herself to the final, she would win just because she's Ceri like, like straight up, no, it wouldn't even be straight a up. question. Even if yeah. she played the worst game of all time, it would be like it'd be like Martin Scorsese getting the Oscar for The Departed. You know he's made. You know he's made better movies in the past, but right. now that he's this moment right here exists, and you must give it to him. Like That's we got him in there. He needs a win. Like it's same like, thing if with Serena. Ever made it to the final three? It's like, please God, give her the win because she deserves win. it after all of the things she's been a part of yeah. on every season. If you have. Someone that we didn't put on the list, please comment. We won't argue with you, guaranteed. We don't argue in the comments. Not yet, anyways. I will on, I will on something, but just not right now. It's going to be we'll a while until Survivor comes back. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. But, yeah, we, maybe we talked about maybe doing a tier list. So we can, mm. oh, we can yeah. come up with some ideas. So. Yeah. 
we'll be back in another month. I'm going to try to do at least a month until Survivor comes back. That's my goal. All right. All right.